The intention of this video is not to position us as experts. The intention of this video is for you to take what you hear here back into the real world and have candid conversations about what it means to have self-love, love and appreciation for each other in the Black American community. Here today, and as promised, I have a guest with me. This is Dion from Tap Love, Tap Life, Tap Life. Hold up, yeah, she got Tap it. Life. We talk about love. <laughs> Dion's from Tap Life Vlogs. So I'm gonna ask Dion to introduce himself to the It Scouts community. Hey, how y'all doing? My name is Dion. Uh, Tap Life Vlogs. You know, it is first off, it's an honor being here with you. I appreciate it. Aww. I appreciate the opportunity to collab. It's always good to get together and like bring minds and perspectives and all that good stuff. Um, so you know what? Um, if you get the opportunity, hopefully I can give y'all a perspective of what y'all have been desiring and beating her over the head about. <laughs> oh my God, them comments be. You know what I'm saying? Them trolls, boy. <laughs> them trolls. <laughs> so I'm going to do my best to be like, you know, this is how we see it as a male. Um, so yeah, so what we got? Okay, so we're gonna start. So we already kind of warmed up and started mm -hmm. conversing before true, we started true, filming. True. And the first thing we talked about is Dion's insurance po policy. Oh Lord, yes. Okay, he listen. got an insurance policy, listen, guys. Every 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 male has an insurance policy, okay. whether, regardless if they know it or not. Okay, right. So like the thing is, is as a man, you need to know what your insurance policy can handle. Okay. In other words, Beyonce walked by here. I'm not covered for that. <laughs> Like, Rihanna, I know, I, Rihanna no, though? Well, you know what? No, I'm not, I'm not covered for that. No, like, I think as a man, you have to have a level of self-awareness of the type of, because a lot of men have that desire to, like, I want the most banging girl, I want the most attractive woman. Mm -hmm. and physically, physically, physical right? But your, but your insurance policy, your self-awareness policy, you need to have a full understanding of the type of woman you should initially pursue. Self-awareness. And what happens is you pursue the song, the wrong type of woman because you don't know yourself and then you get knocked down a peg. Okay. And then you don't want to pursue anybody or, or you pursue the wrong person. Or all women are this or all women are that. Yeah, you just categorize everyone because you don't know your own insurance policy. So See, I said to Dion, when women say that, when women say, hey, you know, I was approached by a guy that I don't really think is on the right level, you sound arrogant. You sound like, oh, you know, okay, bougie, okay, Miss Pris. But it was just kind of refreshing to hear that there are some men that are kind of self-aware and they realize that some realize what kind of have that self-awareness on the level and some kind of don't. You know, it's crazy because I got some of my boys, like, they don't have the good self-awareness. Okay. It took me a while to learn that as well, about okay. self-awareness in... in when you are in an environment, you're at a boutique bar, you're at someone's dinner social, you're at the club, mm -hmm. wherever the case may be, you need to be aware of a woman that you're about to try to pursue or get her number. And sometimes they just don't know when, like, you know what, maybe I shouldn't approach her. Mm -hmm. And I think you be, you saying that this man should not approach me, yeah. no, we, we should be aware of that. Yeah. Like, and if, if you know better... It's kind of like, you know better, like, don't do that. That's that's how we feel. <laughs> it comes off, it's like, it comes off, I, I feel like, because we say it to our girlfriends. It's like, he tried it because he know he's not supposed to talk to me. And, and there is a respectful way to say, I appreciate it, thank you, but no thank you. But what I find is that even when you do that, then you still, oh, you still think, you still, oh, she, oh, she, instead of saying, you know what, maybe that wasn't the right woman to approach. It, I guess it's crazy because... Not only is it about your self-awareness, but you also got to think about the environment in which you're in. Okay. Right? So, like, not just being self-aware of, should I approach her? Like, not be, you don't know anything about someone's education letter by looking at them. Right. At least, for the most part. You right. Know, right. Right? But you can kind of tell, like, okay, well, she got her nails right, her feet are done, you know, you can kind of understand, <laughs> like, well, maybe... You how, do, how do I look? Do, do I have my... Are my shoes clean? Right, like, right. I mean, no, that's literally what I think. Right. Because I assume that a woman, the first thing you're going to look at is, do my fingernails look clean? Do I have a watch on? And are my shoes clean? I mean, it's basics. And I feel like if those three things, they are, but, like, I don't got the right shoes on. Like, today I'm wearing Tim's, y'all. 
Okay. So, right. So, you know, I know like. They looks, clean too. <laughs> but, but listen, but I know every woman I approach, I want me to be wearing Tim's. I mm-hmm. just don't know. You know, so you need to be self aware that. Okay. Um, that that directly, you know, it relates to other things as well. So. Okay. So I'm going to segue a little bit into a conversation that one of my uh, viewers was saying. And he was saying essentially that black men have to be superheroes to pull attractive women. And one of his complaints was that his white counterparts can go out with scruffy hair, scruffy clothes, scruffy shoes, and pull attractive women, but he can't. So he was mad that he couldn't do the pretty much the exact same thing that his white counterparts could do. Um, so how does that fit into the conversation that we were just having about, you know, self-awareness and levels? So he's partially right. Okay. You do have to, you, you almost got to be a superhero <laughs> okay. to get the level of attractive woman you think you want. Okay. Right. So I think his point was you got to be a superhero as a black man, as a man of color to get an attractive black woman or a woman of color. Mm -hmm. But my white counterpart, he could just wake up, Mm -hmm. maybe throw a brush across his teeth (laughs) and get whoever he want. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And that really be true. Really, though? No, I mean, is it? I don't think it's true. (laughs) I think because of numbers, I think because of sheer numbers, Mm -hmm. it looks as if every white person, we have to understand that as black Americans, we're only about 14% of the population. We feel like we're 50, we're not 50% of the population. That's because we're, yeah. We're, you know, we're kind of close knit. So when you're looking at it and you're saying, dang, they could just do whatever, you're looking at 75% of the population. So you can't compare. So it might look like bro barely brushed his teeth and pulling baddies, but is it's that unre- true? It's no. not re- one, and it's probably not realistic for you because the numbers aren't there. Now you can't. Um, I believe in the collar. Okay. I believe in at least attempting to run an iron across your clothes. <laughs> like you know, you can't have the perception that um, you should take me as I am. Mm-hmm. That's what they say in church. So why are you not taking these? <laughs> We're not Jesus. Right, we exactly. Ain't, ain't. Exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, at the end of the day, people's the first thing people do, no matter if you want to admit it or not, mm-hmm. is you use your eyes. Mm-hmm. These two things do not lie. Mm-hmm. So if you know that the two things on your face that do not lie are going to be the first thing she uses, mm-hmm. you might want to just make sure you got your, your game up a little bit. Okay, but you're taking the woman's side. What's no, I'm taking I'm taking the male perspective side. Like, okay. you know, and I'll be honest with you, this is how me and my boys think. We know okay. that if I want to possibly get a woman's number, attract a woman's attention, mm-hmm. I need to put a level of effort into it. I don't think I need to be a superhero mm-hmm. because I know what my insurance covers. Okay. A superhero <laughs> will get me Beyonce, will get me Rihanna in them. Is that realistic for you? No. Okay. It's not. Well. It's not. You know what I'm saying? I mean, is it? No, it's not. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. yeah, I think that's, people just need to understand. Um, it's not being a superhero to get an attractive woman. You just got to know. You got to put in a certain level of effort. Okay. Okay, so Dion formerly lived in DMV, and you know, you guys know that on my channel I do have a dating in DC series. You know how I feel about it. I know you guys don't really be watching it like you watch the London. I was telling I was I was telling Dion they don't, they don't, numbers don't be showing up for the DC series, but I still you know I live here, and so Dion lived here formerly as well. So he had a really interesting perspective on the what it felt like to uh, be a single man in DMV. So being in the DMV is kind of like, okay, so living in the DMV, there's an assumption that you either work for the government, you're in IT, Mm -hmm. you're something, right? So, uh, but the big thing about living in the DMV is that there are a lot of educated people here. Mm -hmm. There are a lot, especially a whole lot of educated black people here. Yeah. Women, at least when I lived here, grossly outnumbered men. Mm -hmm. And then educated black women grossly outnumber educated black men. Yeah. So therefore, we had options. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So like in the DMV, you go somewhere, I walk into a room, I walk into wherever, and I start to peel off my coat, and I'm getting a a drink sent over Mm -hmm. to me within minutes. Mm. I mean, Mm. minutes. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? That must be nice. It was. (laughs) I'm telling you, but... It really just depends on <laughs> okay. what part of the country you live in because in Dallas, that don't happen. Okay. No. What do you think the male to female ratio in Dallas is? I don't know what the ratio is. What does it feel like? It feels like we are everywhere. Men. I, it feels like men are all over Ladies? the place. Ladies? 
we're all Dallas, over the place. Okay. Mm-hmm. We're all over the place. I did have a comment mm-hmm. on one of my cha- on one of my stories where a, a gentleman said, "Move west, move west," yeah. because in yeah. all of the major cities in the East Coast. Mm-hmm women far outnumber men and I believe that because in London I felt like it was 60 40 men to to women Mm. and you're treated differently um because it's just you're more I feel like you're more valued the black thing over there as well but also by sheer numbers Mm. and so it's interesting that's how I feel in DC you can see the men behave in a certain way because you're getting drinks sent to you. It's like, oh, no, no. It's like a real-life Tinder or something yeah. where people are just mm-hmm. swiping left, no. right, left, right. They don't care. Swipe left. Yeah. yeah you exactly. know what I mean? And so it's interesting to hear that in Dallas, um, the numbers aren't the same. No. Or, they, it doesn't, or it doesn't feel the same. If I looked it up, you know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm right, I don't know. But I can tell you, how does it feel when I go to a boutique bar? How does it feel when I go to a happy hour? How does I feel like there are... An abundance of men. Wow. Um, you don't. You, Where do you be going in Dallas? Oh, uh, now listen. <laughs> you can't be, now, Where you be at? If you if you're in <laughs> Dallas, go to Blue Mesa. Okay. You know they got them happy hour blue mar- margaritas. Mm-hmm. You know, they got that hooked up. Okay. Uh, you definitely got to go to Kona Grill. I'm pretty, those are here. Those okay. Are all Which ones? Kona Grill. Okay. Kona, you got to hit up the Kona Grills. Okay. But different pl- boutique bars, small. I'm not really a big clubby. I'm, I'm getting a little old for that. We talked about you the know. club. Yeah. You said. You're not going to find your wife in the club. So, so. my perception, okay. when I go into the club, okay. my wife is not here. Okay. She could be there, yeah. right? There could be some good conservative, just decent woman <laughs> sitting mixed, in a booth, mixed, mixed in. Okay. But my assumption is you are here, so I should not get your number. Okay. But I might have saw you yesterday in aisle three at the grocery store mm-hmm. and totally just passed you by. Okay. So okay. I think a lot of men think that way, like... Um, if I get your number at the club, you know, I don't really foresee anything happening because you, you're going to give your number to somebody else at the club. That's I, oh, I literally think that way. okay. I think that, oh, you're here every weekend. Yeah. Why should I get your number? Even though you might not be, even though you put in a lot of work. Girl, ladies, <laughs> these I don't think these dudes understand the amount of... Okay, I, I'm going to segue the conversation again. Sometimes when we talk about, oh, okay, um, who's going to pay? You ask me out, we gonna go Dutch. You, um, you Hold know, on, wait, they doing Dutch? Who's Chad? doing Dutch? They Hold be walking out on the tab. Hold on, who's doing Tomorrow Dutch? I left my wallet. <laughs> Bro, do you know how much it costs to put Listen, this to get my hair by now? You nails know the go- last time I had a woman pay for my, any part of the day, it's probably been like eight, eight, seven, eight years. Well, okay, why, how do you feel about that? Um, first and of why? All, is, it be- is it because you refuse? To allow somebody to pay, or is it because no, nobody reaches for their purse, or what, what's the issue? Um, first off, no one reaches for their purse. In um, Dallas? In Dallas. Okay. Because they have options. Ah, options right? are good, ladies. In the, here in the DMV, <laughs> I didn't really date that much, okay. um, but when I did go out, um, it was just a foregone conclusion that I was going to pay. Okay, but you see how interesting that is, is that when there was an abundance of women, so many women in DMV that were sending you drinks and stuff, you didn't really date. No. And then now that you're in Dallas, and I guess you're dating a little bit more now, and there's less women, more men, mm-hmm. that's where you see the da- your dating happening. Yes. But then nobody's paying for nothing no. for you. No. <laughs> No. Um, okay. You know, they may offer the tip. It's it's not really a big deal, okay. right? Because I really do believe in this. Oh, they offer the tip? Okay. Yeah, that, that's an offer every every now and again. Okay. I really think there's a difference when you're trying your best. Um, I believe in the art of chivalry, okay. right? And that, although we are no longer knights and running around, but I think that there's still a component in that. And when you're trying to put bring a woman through courtship, bring mm-hmm. her from dating to courtship, that you need to show her, like, hey, this is what I can offer you. Right. Um, and it begins with the basics, like I'm gonna open a door, okay, and I'm gonna pay for some dinner, okay. So if, if it just hasn't been offered, because I guess maybe I haven't allowed to be offered, but at the same time, I don't be seeing nobody reaching for no purse, okay. Do you reach for purses? I it depends on who I'm with, okay. Like it depends okay. on who I'm with. Um, I say I do a lot of no's, um, just because no, what do you mean? Like you know, uh, I don't really date a lot of people because I find that. Here in DC, I think it's the same exact phenomenon where right, it's like right. so many women, Monster and Monster. there's so many women that um, it becomes like not there's no incentive to date mm-hmm. because um, everyone just treats you. Don't, you're not treated very well. Mm. So I find myself being like, you know what? I I can feed myself. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm okay. I don't really want to date so, that much. So you just are you turning down folks because you have the perceived thought that. 
He has so many options. Why should I even tell him yes? And and the way they approach you is different. Mm-hmm. So if a man really approaches you like he sees you for mm-hmm. you and he's like, ah, oh, a valuable one. Let me approach her like a one of substance and value. Right. You can sense that right off the bat. And then you're like, yes, let's go out. Mm-hmm. Most guys are not like that here. They just approach you like numbers. No, and they're like, oh, come <laughs> through. You know what I mean? And you're like, mm, bro, mm, no. No. Mm-mm. See, you, it could have might have worked, but, you know, no. You want to know the number one pickup line that works? What is it? That I've learned through the years. Hi, how are you? Hey, how you doing? My name's Dan. I think you're attractive. I saw you from across the room. I just wanted to introduce myself. Ooh. It works so well. <laughs> like, don't... I don't know why that works so well versus, like, some corny pickup line. If I just introduce myself... Say, I thought you were kind of attractive. Saw you across the room. Just mm-hmm. want to introduce myself. But the attitude is like, um, they might do that at first mm-hmm. initially, and I have one particular one in my mind. Um, they might do that initially at first, but then it's kind of like, it still goes into the, you're lucky I'm here. Oh, mode. do you feel lucky? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. You know, it, 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 and I'm going I'm to bring the colorism issue into it. I genuinely, and not because of a complex that I have, Mm -hmm. but just about being someone who is rather uh, self-aware and observant, Mm -hmm. um, I feel that when you're of a darker skin tone, you especially get that, you lucky I'm even talking to you, Uh, uh, the subversive, under the tone kind of thing. It's like, you know, I'm Denzel, you know, all these women be trying to get with me and stuff, and you know, everybody's head is kind of boosted. And so you're looking like, okay, um, am I, you know... I get it, but not really. The male perspective on that is in my mid-20s, I was guilty of that. Okay. Right? I was guilty of, um, so like, you know, a little background about me. I'm divorced. And, you know, after I divorced, you know, most of the women that I dated were light, bright, almost white. Right? And it was. Pretty common. So what what often happened was if I did, um, you know, if I was attracted to a darker skinned woman, it was oftentimes like, and I didn't realize it, mm-hmm. right? I, we all work on ourselves, mm-hmm. but Hopefully. I didn't. Yeah, exactly. I didn't realize it, but I was, I was coming off like, well, you know, like, you know, my ex looked like, right? You know, how, you know, you see how like she is. You know how? You know what? It's it's very nice to hear you actually articulate that mm-hmm. because sometimes people, the so- society, and just like outwardly, will, sometimes it makes you feel like you're crazy. Right. So. That's the point of these conversations is to say, no, you're not crazy. Mm -hmm. And if we can at least openly um, articulate or openly express what we're feeling, which I find that a lot of guys don't necessarily, they can't connect their actions to their thoughts as directly as you have. Mm -hmm. Because you have that maturity, so clearly you've been reflecting. And you Mm -hmm. can say, oh, shoot, I used to do that, and now I do this. I don't find that a lot of men, I'm not going to say every, but I don't find that a lot of men do that. Mm -hmm. So it's really... I don't want to say comforting because it is still a little bit disheartening, um, but especially when you're younger you, when you, and you're experiencing it. But it is nice to hear somebody actually say, yeah, that is what happens because you feel it. And then yeah. you're like, am I crazy or are all my all my light skin friends married and they, got, some of them are great. Got kids on the way. Yeah. We're not knocking you if you like. No. Excuse no, us. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, my family and all of them, they, you know, I'm not knocking you, but it is you do get that distinct sense, right, especially right. when you're darker skin, that, you know, something's going on. And then people will act like, no, it's you. You need to get your stuff together. You, you, you. But that might be the case, but there is also another level to mm-hmm. it. So it's good to hear you, at, you know, talk about it. Yeah, it's hard. It's, it's hard to admit. That's something I've worked on in the last few years. And I think as a man, you need to be able to work on um, identifying weak areas mm-hmm. in not only just love life, but just your overall life. But, you know... But just being able to identify, like, okay, yeah, when I'm seeking love, mm-hmm. I tend to do this, and I need to work on that. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, that was something I definitely work on. Like, nowadays, if you dark, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with you. Okay. You know? But I think back then it was just a perception thing. <laughs> I, I just don't know, you know? <laughs> so. It's, it's, it's uh, to be, okay, I'm going to go off on a little tangent, a little rant. It is social conditioning, mm-hmm. especially in America where we have a huge race issue. Um, when I talked about reverse culture shock on a lot of my videos, and if you're if you're watching on Dion's channel, on my channel we talk about um, some reverse culture shock, meaning um, where how things are and stereotypes and just the environment and atmosphere overseas, um, how it is, and then when you return home to the states, how the atmosphere and the environment and the perceptions of you are so different that it's hard to 
adjust your you know adjust yourself to that and one of the things was how you're received as particularly as a black woman here in the states versus how you're perceived in overseas and I specifically was in London mm -hmm. um, and you can tell when you go over there the darker the berry like we say it over here oh the darker the berry the sweeter the juice uh-huh very shallowly but when you take yourself to London Italy Madrid um, Stockholm people are kicking down models, blonde, tall, six-foot models to talk to you. Um, and at first you're like, wait, what? Why? You know, oh, a lot of people, a lot of trolls on my channel will try to throw it to, oh, they're just fetishizing you. No, they're no. not necessarily fetishizing mm -hmm. you because you haven't experienced a black woman being desired for her, her darkness. Doesn't mean it doesn't actually exist in an authentic way. Doesn't have to be a fetish. Mm -hmm. It could be true, just like everybody, you know, just like somebody else wants you know, Beyonce or, you know, Kim Kardashian, you know, so. I think that, and I, speaking of overseas, I agree with you on that because um, traveling overseas, whenever you identify a darker skinned woman, and that's what helped me transition and realize mm -hmm. that I was being unfair to darker skinned women when I went overseas. So going overseas, me being in different countries, yeah. if I'm in Spain or Italy or wherever, when you see a darker skinned woman, you're like, who, or where's she come from? Versus here, it is, an, it's a, oh, okay, well, she, you know, another Diamond one, doesn't. Another, exactly. Yeah. So overseas, you definitely get the uh, opportunity okay. to uh, appreciate um, mm. darker skinned women. You just do. Okay. Versus, um, you know, and so I see what you mean by reverse culture. So I'm yeah. shocked because over there, you're like, okay, cool, the culture is acceptance. Yeah. Here it's not necessarily necessarily rejecting. It's yeah. just like an assumption that they're plentiful. Yeah. So therefore, you do you do feel you do kind of feel rejected. Okay. Like you do feel like uh, not my, mm, mm, okay. Move. Let me get the that one over there. So so how do you think us men um, other because everybody's not gonna self identify an issue in themselves. No. Right. I, that that happened with me by traveling, by living in different places, by being around different cultures. But if I literally only lived in Dallas my whole life, yeah. Ooh. I still well you feel bad. Hold on. No, 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 not just for <laughs> Dallas, but for like in the States. I'm right. huge everyone in the States, I understand the States is huge. It's mm -hmm. three hundred over three hundred million people here. You know, you can travel, save mm -hmm. money mm -hmm. and all of that, but you really need to go someplace other than Vegas and Puerto Rico. Oh, please. Yes, please. Please. Get a passport. <laughs> please. Get some stamps. Yeah. Gonna finish the conversation over on Dion's channel. Are we going over there? We're okay. going over there. Okay, cool. Because you know the conversation was juicy over here. Right. But it's right. gonna be juicy over there. Yeah, just hey. Come on. Y'all welcome. And you have to leave comments over there and hit that big red button. You know what that big red button is? I think it's like it's gonna be right here, don't you worry. It says subscribe. Yes. So hit up his channel, leave the comments, and continue the conversation on over there and let him know it's Kel sent you. Yes. Hey, I appreciate y'all. If y'all come over, check out the content. I don't bite, and it, it's going to be something interesting, and you're going to see the second half of this conversation, and she can tell you about it. It's you know we can talk. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you know we can talk. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. You know I do these videos, so you know you're not out here alone in this sometimes crazy dating world. If this is your first time here, I would love to have you subscribe, and if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for returning. And uh, leave me comments, questions over here on my channel and again over on Dion's Tap Life Tap Life Vlogs. Tap Life Vlogs. And we will see you guys again in the next one. Bye. I'll let you.